Well, check out this vintage RCA AM radio that a customer dropped off to me. Let's go ahead and plug it in, power it on, wait a few seconds and see if we get sound. Oh, I hear something. That volume control is in need of some deoxid. But look at this, tuning, absolutely nothing. So I suspect the dial cord is broken. I wonder if we can tune this by hand by reaching in the back of the radio. That's not the speaker, that is the tuning dial. So let's go ahead and try to move it by hand. I'm getting something. There it is, it's working. Well, let's go ahead and see if we can pull the knobs off and pull the guts out of this unit and take a quick peek at it. Well, certainly this thing has been around for a couple of days. Look at the amount of dust that's on the back of this thing. Holy moly. And then here it is. There is the broken dial cord. So I'll have to figure out how to restring this. And I don't think I have any extra dial cord, so I'll probably have to order some new dial cord. Let's go ahead and flip it over and look at the bottom of the chassis. Probably not gonna find any circuit boards here. It's probably all point to point wiring. Oh my gosh, look at that. Oh, it's just beautiful down in here. They don't make things like this anymore. Man, I can't believe this thing is still working after all these years. Well, let's go ahead and see if some deoxid will help that scratchy volume control. I'm gonna shut the power off. Then I'm just gonna squirt some deoxid in here, a couple of spritzes. Then we'll run the pot back and forth several times. And I think I'll hit the band select switch over here on the side as well. I'm gonna put the knob back on the front just to make it easier to turn. Well, let's go ahead and power the unit back up and see if we get any better results. And I think I'll go ahead and give this big capacitor a quick ESR. I think it's been changed before because look at the solder connections here. There is one of the connections as it attaches to one of the tube sockets. And this is the other connection to the capacitor, which leads me to believe that it has been replaced sometime in the past, most likely. The chances of this thing being brand new from, when was this made? 40s, 50s, I don't even know. But the chances of it being in good shape at this point is astronomical. After cleaning the volume control, check this out. The Reddit subreddit that attempted to Cohen lost a bunch of money in that, but that is- It just works absolutely perfectly now. I'm probably gonna to wanna to go ahead and replace that main filter cap, but I don't know what the voltage is across this capacitor. So I'll get my voltmeter. Okay, so let's go ahead and measure the voltage across that filter capacitor and see what it's rated at. So now this has a negative lead on this end that attaches right here. It's this one black wire. Okay, so the radio is powered on. And I have 121 volts on that side and 89 on that side. So we're gonna to have to find at least a 160 volt rated capacitor to replace this. But let's go ahead and pull out the blue ESR meter and we'll give it a quick ESR and see what it checks like. Okay, so here is the blue ESR meter and I'll just verify we have 0, 0.00 ohms with the lead shorted and we do. So I'm gonna go from this common point over to here, wow, 0 0.29, 0 0.3 ohms. Not too terribly bad. And on this side, 0 0.33, 0 0.34 ohms. So all things being equal, if I measure between the two positive leads, I should see 0.6 ohms approximately. And I see 0.48. Man, that capacitor is in great shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and contact my customer and see what he wants to do with this. I do recommend changing that one electrolytic capacitor in this unit to make it reliable over the long run, plus restringing the dial cord. And I think this thing's gonna be up and running once again. So I just want to show you the tag from the bottom of the unit. Now, unfortunately, I cannot make out the model number up here, but I do have a serial number to go by. 
And of course I have the guarantee. Maybe it has a lifetime guarantee. Let me zoom in on that so we can all read it. Well, unfortunately, this unit only has a 90 day guarantee. And then there is a closer up view of the patent numbers. They're probably mostly irrelevant at this point. Probably most of the patents have expired by now. And then if anybody knows what the model number is on this, go ahead and let me know so I might be able to locate a schematic or a photo fact on this unit. And then there are the location of the tubes. And then finally, it is an authentic RCA Victor product. So the glass came out of this unit. Luckily, it did not break. It is supposed to have a cardboard piece on each side. This piece had fallen out. The other one is totally missing, so I may have to cut a piece of cardboard to make it fit back into place. While we have the glass out, let's go ahead and clean it. Man, look at all that yellow that came off there. I'm thinking this might have came from someone who was a smoker at one time. All right, now it looks like the day it was born. Look at that. So I'll go ahead and get it reinstalled back in the unit, replace that capacitor that's been in there for who knows how many years, get the dial cord restrung, and make this thing like new once again. Well, unfortunately, I can't make out the values on this capacitor because they put the clamp right over the label. So I'll probably have to cut the clamp off if the customer wants to proceed with this repair because I'd really like to replace this with some brand new capacitors. Well, I got lucky and I was able to slide the ring back to where it was supposed to go. And these are rated 50 microfarads, 150 volts. So I don't think that's going to be a problem finding replacements for this thing. I'll probably have to order them. I doubt that I have any 46 at 160 in stock. Okay, so I went ahead and ordered some replacement dial cord. I did not have any left in stock, so I got 12 feet of the 0.8 millimeter dial cord. But before I go ahead and restring the dial cord, I'm going to go ahead and add a drop of the oil to the bushing right here on the tuning control knob. Get it down in there. And I'll do the same thing on this side. just to help it turn a little bit freer. So I went and made a rudimentary roadmap of the way the dial cord was strung, as far as I could tell after it broke and was just kind of laying there in that position. Okay, so I have the dial cord restrung and it works great, both ends of the spectrum. Low frequency to high frequency with less capacitance, as you see the tuning capacitor coming out of the slots for less capacitance. And the lower the frequency, the more capacitance it will have. All right, so I went ahead and ordered a replacement LED lamp for this thing. And I've already got it installed right there. I haven't changed the capacitor yet, so we'll go ahead and power the unit up. You can see the LED lights up. No problem there. So let's go ahead and replace the two filter capacitors now. And then we'll have to try to adjust the dial pointer that just clips onto the dial cord. So we'll do that here in just a moment after I change the capacitors. So I've got a couple of 47 microfarad, 160 volt, 105 Celsius rated capacitors that I'm gonna go ahead and replace this single can with. And I think the leads are gonna be long enough that I can just go ahead and clip the existing leads, tack them to the ends of these. We'll twist the negatives together to make one common. And then hopefully I can get them back in this single loop, the clamp they have right there and screw it back in down here. And hopefully everything will be good after that. All right, there are the new filter caps installed. They fit absolutely perfectly in the old clamp. They were the perfect size. So I didn't have to jam them in. I did have to slightly squeeze the clamp, put them in, and then release the clamp. Once I did that, they stayed in perfectly. They're nice and tight. Not too tight that's going to cut the heat shrink that's already on them, but it's tight enough that they're not going to go anywhere. So new leads attached, all heat shrunk. Very good. Let's go ahead and flip it back over now. We'll power the unit up, kind of put the pointer somewhere, and I'll kind of have to drop the case on it based on a station that I have locally here and see if the pointer lines up where it should be. 
I went ahead and I just loosely put the pointer on it. I can still move it back and forth as necessary without moving the tuning dial or the string. And I just kind of centered it up here from end to end. I'm about three quarters of an inch from this end. And then if I crank it all the way over on this end, I'm about three quarters of an inch. Pretty doggone close. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pop it together and I know I have a station down here. Let me go ahead and we'll power it up now. Let it warm up for just a moment. Let's try to find a station. It's Finn who do the same job. And the answer is yes, you are paying. There is a local station. That is 1290 kilohertz. So I'm gonna go ahead and slip the case back on it now and see are we close? to somewhere between the 120 and 140 mark. Well, I'm gonna tell you what, it's like 1305, 1310, and I'm supposed to be getting 1290. That is pretty doggone close. I'm gonna move the pointer about a 16th of an inch this way, and then I'm gonna go ahead and clamp it down. We'll put this thing back together and ship it back to the customer. Okay, so I know it's kind of dark right here. I have the radio turned sideways so that I can pick up a station on the low end of the AM spectrum. And I show one coming in at just past 650. So I've got some music playing here. So there's a song playing there. And I just happen to have my little C-Crane radio right here. We'll turn that down. 660. 660. So it looks like it's aligned perfectly for the low end and the high end. So let me shut the light off and show you what the LED light looks like in here real quick. There it is on the super low light setting. It's only taking about four frames per second, but you certainly can tell where you are. Well, there it is all back together. It's never supposed to be 16 games. It's always supposed to be- Man, the thing sounds good. Well, Settled on 16, and they've been unable to wiggle off 16 games. Even with the high tone. The low tone has a little bit better tonal quality to it, in my estimation, for AM radio, for talk radio especially. Now, listening to music, maybe you'd want the high tone. Dial cord replaced, filter caps replaced, controls cleaned and lubed with Deoxit D5, glass cleaned, resecured back into place, and it's just, it's looking good. This thing is in actually mint condition for the age. Even the cabinet is in really good condition. I did not test the shortwave. The customer was not interested in the shortwave portion of it. I certainly hope you enjoyed the video on the RCA AM radio repair. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really does help my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me NorCal715videos at gmail.com. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below. I try to read all the comments and I respond when I have time. Remember with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin and out of the e-waste facility. Everybody, thank you for making it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. Everyone have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Now, the last word and final word in this. So the the thing we